Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through an introduction to percent error. We'll talk about what percent error is, how to calculate percent error, and go through some examples. Now basically, percent error is a way for us to see how far off a measurement or estimation is from the actual value written as a percent. When we take measurements or make estimations, we're not always exactly accurate. So percent error is a way for us to see how accurate a measurement or estimation is relative to or compared to the actual value. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have the owner of a restaurant estimated that 45 customers would come in for lunch. The actual amount of customers was 36. Calculate the error and percent error. Now you'll notice we're calculating error and percent error here. We'll see the difference as we work through this. Now to calculate percent error, which we have the formula right here, we take the measured value or estimated value and subtract the actual value. Then we take the absolute value of that result. So if it's negative, it will turn positive. Then we divide that by the actual value. This will give us a decimal. We then multiply the decimal by 100 to convert it to a percent. So let's set this up for number one. We have percent error equals the absolute value of the estimated value, that's 45, so 45 minus the actual value, that's 36, divided by the actual value, so again, that's 36 times 100. And now we can work through this. Let's start with the subtraction. So we have 45 minus 36. That gives us 9. So we have the absolute value of 9 divided by 36 times 100. Now before we move on, I want to mention that when we take the measured value or estimated value and subtract the actual value, that gives us the error. And the error is how far away we are from the actual value. So for number one, the owner's estimate of 45 customers was off by nine from the actual value of 36 customers. So again, when we take the measured value or estimated value and subtract the actual value, that gives us the error. So for number one, the error is nine. And that's a positive nine. That positive is important because it tells us that the estimate is over the actual value. It was over by nine. On the other hand, a negative indicates that the estimate was under. And we'll see what that looks like with number two. So the error for number one is nine. And we can even highlight that it's positive by putting a positive sign in front Again, that shows us that the estimate was over by nine. Now let's continue to work towards the percent error. So let's take the absolute value of nine, that's nine. So we have nine divided by 36 times 100. Now taking the absolute value of the error gives us the absolute error. That's nine here. And we have that over the actual value, 36. Now this is a ratio, the ratio of the absolute error to the actual value. In other words, we have the absolute error compared to the actual value. This ratio is called the relative error. Now we need to divide to get this to a decimal. So we have nine divided by 36. That gives us 0. 25, 25 hundredths. Converting that decimal to a percent gives us the percent error. So we're presenting the error as a percentage of the actual value. So we need to multiply that decimal by 100 in order to convert it to a percent. 
And remember, a quick way to multiply by 100 is to move the decimal twice to the right. So once, twice to the right, and that gives us 25%. So the percent error, 25%. Let's move on to number two, where the owner now estimates for the dinner crowd. We have the owner estimated that 110 customers would come in for dinner. The actual amount of customers was 125. Calculate the error and percent error. So let's set this up. We have percent error equals the absolute value of the estimated value, that's 110, minus the actual value, that's 125, divided by the actual value, 125, times 100. Now let's work through this. So we will start by subtracting. We have the estimated value, 110, minus the actual value, 125. That gives us negative 15, and that's our error. So we have the absolute value of negative 15 divided by 125 times 100. So this is our error right here negative 15. Now that negative tells us that the estimate was under. So the owner's estimate was off by 15, and again, it was under by 15. Let's continue to work towards the percent error. So we need the absolute value of negative 15. That's positive 15. So we're getting rid of the negative sign. And then we divide that by 125, and then multiply by 100. So 15 is the absolute error, and we have that over the actual value of 125. So we have the ratio of the absolute error to the actual value. This is the relative error. Now we need to divide to get this to a decimal. We need to do 15 divided by 125. That gives us 0.12. 12 hundredths. And we need to multiply that decimal by 100 in order to convert it to a percent. So let's move the decimal once, twice to the right, and that gives us 12 percent. And that's our percent error. So 12 percent. Now looking at numbers one and two, was the owner's estimate more accurate for number one, lunch, or for number two, dinner? Well, the error for number one, the owner was off by nine. His estimate was above the actual value by nine. For number two, the owner's estimate was off by 15, and the estimate was under the actual value. The easy answer would be to say that the lunch estimate was more accurate because the error was less. We have off by 9 compared to off by 15. But this is actually incorrect. The error doesn't give us enough information. The numbers we are working with and their size matter. And we have different numbers for lunch and dinner. So we have to see how the errors relate, how they compare to the actual values. And that gives us a much better idea of how accurate a measurement or estimate is. For lunch, the percent error was 25%. So the estimate was off the actual value by 25%. And then for dinner, the percent error was 12%. So the estimate was off the actual value by 12%. So that tells us that the owner's estimate for dinner was quite a bit more accurate than the estimate for lunch. And percent error gives us the information we need to make that determination. Now let's take a look at two more examples to help us better understand percent error. Here are two more examples of percent error. Let's take a look at number three, where we have an estimated value of seven 
and then an actual value of 28. Now I calculated the error and percent error for both of these examples. We're going to compare these examples in order to see how percent error can be more helpful than just looking at the error itself. So we're building on our understanding from numbers one and two. Now the estimate for number three was off by 21. Specifically, the error was negative 21. So the estimate was under the actual value. This gives us a percent error of 75%. So really, this estimate wasn't very close at all. Keep in mind, the higher the percent error, the lower the accuracy. The lower the percent error, the higher the accuracy. You want a percent error to be as close to 0% as possible. A 0% error means that the measurement or estimate was exact. It was the same as the actual value. So 75% here is pretty high. That's pretty far off. Now looking at number four, the estimated value is 1,010,000. The actual value is 1 million. That means the estimate was off by 10,000. Specifically, the error was positive 10,000 which tells us the estimate was higher than the actual value. Now, an error of 10,000 may sound like a lot, but because of the numbers we are working with here and their size, we have a percent error here of only 1%. That's a close estimate, only 1% off the actual value. Now, if we just compared the errors between numbers three and or so off by 21 compared to off by 10,000, we would think that number three was a better estimate by a lot. But looking at the percent errors, number four is actually a much, much better estimate than number three. So there you have it. There's an introduction to percent error. Check the description for links to other examples. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.